Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're here again to have our final video with Mist before um, we kind of wrap this series up. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, WX Land. Yeah. And we have Randy back with us. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about WX Land, PPSK, per user PSK, and then personal W Lands. Oh, oh whoa. wow. Okay. Whoa. Trio there. I thought it was just WX Land. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all combined a little bit. They all. <laughs> So form a story. Let's, let's start off by defining what is WX land. So it's our way of doing policy control. Okay. So we started with a blank sheet and we wanted to look at how do we want to do policy control in any network and particularly in a wireless network. And you've dealt with ACLs before, right? Yep. yep. These massive, nerdy, complex tables that you need some expert to configure and they're fragile. And they work very few parts of the time. Yep. <laughs> and you look at it and you're going to see data there from, from years ago. And you're not even going to understand what half of it is. They're fragile. They're not fun to use. <gasps> and then somebody changed a port and it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you have to debug, try to figure out why. So we want to start with a blank sheet of paper and then figure out, well, what do we want to do? Okay. And we realize that people want to set intent. They set ACLs up because they have certain intents, such as they want guest users to talk to guest services like printers. Hmm. That's what they want to do. And we want to allow our operators to do that, simply do that. That's a good, that's a good way. I like intent. It's better. We're not trying to limit. We're trying to define intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and that's, that's a, a very, very good common yeah. request. That and having guests send something through AirPlay to the screen. Does <laughs> anybody and everybody request. care? You know, <laughs> picks it up on their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So this is what you mean by defining uh, WX line with these policies. Yep. Policies for intent and also for security, of course. All right. So let's dive into it. So if we look at our network tab, we have security and we have policy. So this is under our policy area. Okay. So if we look at this, these are all the rules. So these are some rules that we have set up in a test system here. If I want to add another rule, uh, I can add a rule. Uh, first, I'm going to edit labels though. So what we did was instead of having a very complex set of rules, we have labels. You can label things. Okay. We push the complexities to the side. So I might have a label that I can call guess stuff, and I can define what type of label it is. Maybe it's a particular client uh, by either type or by name, individual client, uh, BLE, apps. I can define WLAN, such as wow. anybody connected in particular WLAN will be labeled as guest stuff. Uh, connecting to particular access point, IP address range is a popular one. I might have all my guest equipment on a certain IP range. Uh, host name, I can just say literally what host it is, applications and port. I like the application aspects. We've kind of gotten away mm -hmm. from blocking at a port, or not yeah. blocking, defining intent mm -hmm. at a port level, and it's gone more into an application level. We've changed level. our intent. Yeah, we've changed, <laughs> we've changed kind of which layer that we're, we're defining intent at, which is yeah. very interesting. Yeah, because a lot of operators, their intent isn't to allow you to talk to IP addresses. Their intent is allowed to use certain applications. So if you like applications, and let's set up get, uh, guest stuff, as being the applications, which is uh, Facebook. And I can create that. Wow. So now I have something called guest stuff, and I can come back and add that at any point in time in the future. And then I could set rules up around that. So if I go back over to the rules, I can add rules. And on the left-hand side, I define the context. Who is allowed to get access or be denied access to the resources, which we just set up, which is guest stuff. Okay. So in here, I can say all users can access to it. Uh, that's no fun. We can limit it a little bit. We can say, how about anyone talk, uh, anybody connecting to the guest WLAN is allowed to access guest stuff. That's yeah, I, it. I got a problem with this. I didn't have to write 15 lines of code to make this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to <laughs> delete half of it to change its priority to number one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that's, a, that's a problem. Yep. So it's uh, simple. You can't yeah. charge a ton of money for this anymore. What? Wait, wait, wait. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> that was an hour's worth of work, right? Mm -hmm. yep. You can uh, still bill for it. You can still bill yeah. it. You can still yep. bill it. Yeah. One hour minimum. So I'm assuming <laughs> with that lovely plus sign right there, you're not limited to one to one. You can Correct. you can go ahead and you can add multiple gr user groups as well as multiple um, yep. intents. Yeah, yep. many to one, <laughs> one to many, or many to many. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, very and I'm dynamic. assuming that the check in the middle there is just to turn the policy on or off? If and to allow it or disallow it, we can uh, modify this to say you want to disallow certain things. But the check there is clearly saying that guest WLAN users are allowed to talk to guest stuff. 
That's outstanding. Mm -hmm. And you can see the ones down here are grayed out. That's to indicate that those are currently disabled. Sometimes you want to temporarily remove one mm -hmm. for testing or for different uh, periods of time. You can disable them without removing them. Wow, that's awesome. That, that kind of is a game changer as far as policy control just because just in simplicity in itself, but you almost have like a level of like layer some firewall mm -hmm. built into a policy yeah. where usually again, you're all right, this subnet can't use this. Once it gets to the firewall, now you're yeah. not even, you're, you're mm -hmm. kind of, you're yeah. reducing overhead traffic at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yeah. You remove a lot of com complex configurations, any complexity regarding, all right, if someone's on this network, you know, it's one very specific device on our trusted network. Mm -hmm. There's, Usually people have a problem with that because now you've poked a hole into the network. Yeah, and you mentioned some interesting trust, and you said firewalling. This is all tied a little bit to security because why we send these policies is partially about security, and security is fragile when it's complex. Yep. Somebody makes a mistake in the ACL, now you have a security hole. People worry about cryptography being broken. The real threat are accidental mistakes of configuration, so right. this is easier to configure. Speaking of encryption and security, and take this one step further, building on top of this, we also have per user PSK. What this is that we can give out different PSK keys for different users. Okay. A great example of this is our printer. We have a bunch of wireless printers here. When we went to configure them, we put them onto our network and we gave them our PSK. Now, if we gave him the PSK that everybody else here shares, I don't know where that went. Could have went to a different country. Yeah. I don't trust. Man, can I get that? Because I'm going to go outside and print. I got a yeah. few things to yeah. Yeah. So, like, we don't know who made that printer, what firmware is in there. Has it been compromised? That's part of our system here. It's within our security walls here. Yeah. So, I just gave our PSK to this device. I gave this the same PSK. PSK. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, that's fragile and it's not very secure. So if I want to set up a different WLAN here just for a test, um, I can specify multiple passphrases. Oh, okay. Wow. So by specifying multiple passphrases, I can give each individual user their own passphrase. So by doing this, I can now assign one to our printer. Mm -hmm. I can assign one to each individual employee. Is this something you can automate as far as the password generation? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it'll default the password for you. You okay. can choose your own policy and you can default it. Okay. You don't want to be choosing passwords yourself. And people are horrible password <laughs> choosers. <laughs> Come on, password is a yeah. perfectly good password. Yes. You just, password put a capital, one. you just put a capital P there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the biggest benefit to this with having multiple pass phrases for a single SSID is when, let's say, that device is now lost. You don't have to change that PSK for every single device on your network. You just revoke that oh, one. Come on. Printer passphrases are awesome, man. They're so easy to do. It's easy to get They're printers secure. online. They're secure. You know, you don't have to press the button anymore. They're off touch screens. So how, does the, how does the security work, though, on the, on the back end of things? If I'm creating this one SSID, everyone's got a different password. Are they all on the same network still? Or you build some sort of bubble around those devices on, those same, on the same password? So that's where personal WLANs comes in. So it'd be nice That's if we it. give people their own WLAN. Yeah. A great example of this is schools. Each dorm room would be nice if it's their own little domain. Uh, the simplest way to do that would be if I could just give someone a key, just like you do the key to their door, say, here's your key, use your key however you want. Mm -hmm. Put it on your Apple TV, your Chromecast, your laptop. Then what we do with personal WLANs is we confine them to communicating only among themselves within the wireless network, if they're on the same AP, within the wired network, leveraging WXLAN, even wow. if they happen to connect to two different uh, APs. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I was like, like, on the, I was like, wait a second, you're confining them to a single AP, that's, that, that makes sense. It's like, why would you want, no, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a lot of sense. <laughs> and it kind of yeah, alleviates yeah. the idea that it's a great idea to give everybody their own personal network. How many times have you gone out to a work site and they're like, well, I need 15 SSIDs. And you're like, well, the management overhead on that is going to kill your network, but I need 15. You know, mm -hmm. this guy needs it, that guy needs it, this guy needs his own. The sprinklers, yeah. you need one mm -hmm. for these IoT devices, and, and uh, you know, for the users, but then these specific users need to be on their own network. 
Mm -hmm. And then with IoT devices, you want to have one just for IoT. Well, IoT, are they going to start playing well together? Well, mm -hmm. As soon as you want to go to each individual user and group, 15 is not even enough. It doesn't yeah. work. And it's insufficient. Yeah. So I have more than 15 students on the average uh, college. So, so I guess really the question is, is okay, so you've solved the problem of multiple SSIDs. How does it work as far as management traffic? How are you handling that broadcast traffic as far as... Is it you're just basically separating? I don't know. I just it's that's kind of what blows my mind a little bit. Is what's the secret sauce? So we unicast it. Oh. So broadcasts are fragile. Broadcasts okay. we've been unicast them for a while anyway. Broadcasts are very fragile. Okay. Maybe people get it. Maybe they don't. You hope they get it. So what we do is we unicast all multicast traffic to the individual users, and that's the way we can control exactly who they go to. Mm -hmm. So a personal WLAN, if go. a broadcast comes down, it'll get unicasted only to people that need that. Do have that. So when you sign, so basically, oh, all right, because yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, then a great use case of this could even be you have a printer in your dorm room, you go down to a different building in the college, you can still print your own printer. It'll just show up as if yep. it's on your network. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you for that because uh, Lee Badman and I, had, MFD, had a conversation. I was like, that was a perfect use case. Yeah. You could be sitting in a classroom and you're like, crap, I need to print this out for later. You don't want to have to pay. You just print it off to your dorm room and be done with it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's an, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a really neat feature. Very useful and also gets rid of a lot of headache, I think, for yeah. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think by combining it with the PSK, we don't need a whole management system around there where I want to take my laptop and my Apple TV and have some management console around that to bind them together in a personal WLAN. Just the fact that I use that key, mm -hmm. it just binds them together. So can you actually tie the personal WLAN back to, say, like an 802.1x authentication? So if you start looking at, like, a lot of places, like schools will use people's AD accounts as they kind of, that is their one unifying could you tie their AD account to their actual It actually, that's also PSK. combined. A lot of times we use the PSK as an example because okay. people understand that. Okay. But it's also combined with A02 and actually even mix and match. Nice. One of the reasons we do this with PSK is because with not all devices support A02 and X, not yeah. all support Radius. Yeah. So if they don't support A02 and X, you, you, you must be talking about printers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of devices. Printers can do it now. Yeah. They're yeah. catching up. Yeah. As soon as you can find a five gigahertz chip in one of them too, I'll be no. happy. <laughs> But a person WNs, you can completely mix and match. That's wow. outstanding. That's awesome. Is there anything else that we need to know about WXLAN, PPSK, personal WLAN? Yeah. It's all encompassing under yeah. WXLAN with the policies. That's mm -hmm. yeah, our, our policy engine. You can even include that in WSN rules so you can control the personal WLANs or where they can go to, where they can't get to. That's, that's oh, man. <laughs> A lot of ideas just brewing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's like, all right, can we get about 30 of these in an empty warehouse and I want to do this with some VBLE. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a couple of <laughs> ideas to, to go around. Yeah. So, awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. Um, that was WXLAN. So if you guys have any questions, again, put them in the comments below. Um, this will be our last video with Mist from this series. Uh, this has been a great experience for us. Uh, hopefully we'll have one more video where we kind of go over our thoughts. We're going to kind of review some of this equipment and ourselves. Yeah. And so until then, we will see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching this episode. We hope you found it very insightful, very educational. And if you have any comments or feedback on this, on this video, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you guys think. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get uh, access to new episodes, know when they come out. And also, we got some other videos right here for you to check out if you haven't seen them already. Well, we'll see you guys soon.